Well, welcome everybody, and we are at the 28th annual Kansas Racers Auction and Trade Show, and we are here at the, I want to call it the Expo Century Center. Two. Century 2 Convention Center. Century 2 Convention Center, and I forgot I didn't ask you your name for the Greg Deathridge. Greg Deathridge. Greg Deathridge, and you guys are out of Texas, and you put on a bunch of these, it sounds like. We do four a year, and uh, this one is uh, in its 28th year. We moved over here three years ago at, um, from an, another uh, convention center over here in Wichita Falls, or Wichita, Kansas. And uh, we moved over here because it's more climate control and it's a lot nicer building. So then next weekend we'll go to Oklahoma City uh, to our next show. So yeah, make sure and put the dates on that so anybody who's watching this video will know what the dates are and the locations. Uh, uh, we usually do this show right after Christmas, which today is what uh, two days after Christmas, and then we go to Oklahoma City. It's always the first weekend in January, and then we uh, go to Tulsa to uh, we do across the from the races we do a auctions a racers auction, and then in February we do we do a race or a, a auction in Wichita Falls, Texas. So four of them, man, you guys must have a busy month of January is all I can say because it has to be a lot to put one of these together. Well, it takes a lot to put it on, uh, you know, in the months prior. We start working on them pretty hard in about August. We also have an indoor winter cart uh, series that we do. We have five of those, so uh, we stay busy in the winter time. so we enjoy it. You see a lot of, lot of familiar faces, a lot of racers are here today, a lot of track champions, a lot of, lot, of, lot of fun around here, a lot of racetracks are here, a lot of people here, so hope you get to go get a chance to talk to them. Oh, we're going to work our way around. One more thing we might throw in there is a, a website that people, because so many people are on a computer nowadays, a website that they can go to and get all this information so if they want. Ratio.net, R-A-C-E-S-H-O-W.net, or you can uh, follow us on Facebook. Uh, it's Auction Ratio on Facebook. So uh, we have a big following. We've got a good turnout here today. We've got about a thousand people here today. So, uh, and uh, a lot of vendors and a lot of racers uh, getting their cars ready or buying stuff or for next, you know, for the next coming race season. So, uh, and next weekend, January 3rd, we'll be in Oklahoma City. January 17th, we'll be at the Chili Bowl. And February 7th, we'll be in uh, Wichita Falls, Texas. So, Man. glad to have you. I'm, uh, I've watched you before, and uh, I'm glad that glad y'all made finally made the trip. Yeah. Well, we we started last year. I think we went out to Hayes for one, and uh, it's just an opportunity during the winter, like you say, to get to see a lot of familiar faces, racers, promoters, and uh, stuff like that. I so had, I had a gentleman just tell me it's uh, it's like going to a reunion because he said it's uh, old racers got nothing to do in the winter time, so they come out and just. They want to visit and swap stories, and the older they get, the more races they won, you know, and then, so kind of like the fisherman's tale. So. Well, I think the racers kind of let the guard down a little. I mean, we're not here to compete. You know, you're just here to buy something or look around and see what you got for the upcoming season. Rivalries in the, on the racetrack in the summertime to just friends and uh, yeah. uh, swapping stories in the wintertime. So I think you'll, you'll enjoy it. Walk around and uh, uh, make yourself at home. Well, Greg, uh, I appreciate you uh, having us in here, and uh, like I say, we're looking forward to it. Uh, boy, this looks like a, a big deal. I haven't been inside yet, but man, this place looks huge, and uh, a lot of good stuff to see. Okay, glad you made it, and uh, anyone out there that hadn't been, uh, we'd like to have, see you one day at one of these shows, So, but uh, we appreciate you coming. Maybe we'll cross paths again, buddy. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Well, Bob, it looks like we've uh, kind of got ourselves together here again. Saw you out in Hayes last year and down here in your hometown. Bobby Bills of Bills Built Race Cars, and I remembered this year. Last year I was doing one of them numbers, but uh, have a good year last year. Yeah, we sure did. Uh, got a couple championships, won a lot of races. Cars did really well. Looking forward to this year, I'm sure. I, I saw you, I think, in a couple of places racing personally. How did you do? Were you out there making it or uh, just selling some cars? I was doing all right. <laughs> I can't remember wh whether it was Salina or where, but I know I, I, we crossed paths somewhere. But uh, what about the car this year? Is it going to be anything new? I mean, I know I, I always ask that, and I'm thinking, well, there's going to be some revolutionary development out there. But <laughs> anything new on a Bills built this year? Yeah, we've uh, went in and completely redesigned the front end on these cars. We've got them working really well for next year. And uh, we did a little bit to the back end, not a lot, but... 
we focused a lot on the front end and it's it's working good yeah. now when you go into this new technology is this feedback from the guys that drive these cars or is this something that you think up yourself or how does that work well it's kind of conglomerate of both we we come up with an idea I we put it on a few cars the guys go out and try and test them like Brennan Gimmel he was towards the end of the year we were testing this front end set up with him and it worked really well and yeah. tweaked it and put it into production so there's little R&D behind it it's just not hey we're gonna throw this at the car and see what happens you actually no, get out no. there and try it no there's a lot of R&D <laughs> I don't want to put something out that that flops and <laughs> no. <laughs> not gonna sell many cars that way but yeah. uh, uh, looks like it's gonna be a fun time this year uh, what's your expectations about where you're going to be racing is it just going to be around here in wichita or where um about like every year i like to jump around race a bunch of different race tracks i have fun doing that meeting different people talking to pre-existing customers yeah. helping them if i can get to all the tracks i can and at least you know show my face and support them yeah and, that's one of the other things I think about these race cars that gets me is how much technical support these guys can get because it seems like sometimes a lot of them that I hear from is, well, we just we don't get no additional information on the setup, but uh, you, you guys are pretty good about that? Yeah, we're, uh, even during racing season, like when I'm racing on a Saturday night, my cell phone is sitting on my on my bench in my trailer and and I'm constantly walking in, checking it, checking text messages, yeah. phone calls, and trying to yeah. keep in, you know, if people got questions, I answer them. Even when I'm racing, I'm still taking care of them. Not 24-hour service, but... Uh, well, I don't know about <laughs> that. I've had some phone calls late at night. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, folks, Bobby, Bob, I'm going to get it. Bill's built race cars here out of Wichita. Bobby, thanks a lot for talking to us and look forward to uh, seeing you down the road somewhere. All right, thank you. Well, we've caught up with Phoenix race car chassis here and we got Neil Adams. Uh, Neil uh, out of, uh, oh, I'm Nevada, trying to, Missouri. Nevada, Missouri. Uh, how did this season go for you guys this year? Uh, went pretty good. We had a lot of cars in Texas running IMCA and uh, did really good. We had a guy sitting number two in the nation for a long time and then he had to quit racing for a while, bit a little bit, but we still had two guys in the top 20 in the nation, IMCA. A lot of local guys doing really good. Uh, Andy Bryant, uh, top 10 in uh, B mods, USRA in the nation. Uh, just a lot of progress, a lot of hard work, and uh, great, great company to be with. And uh, you know, as far as customer-wise, uh, we do anything we can to make it work for them. I was gonna say it. This race car deal, man, it's just a continuing process. It seems like every six months something changes, <laughs> and then there's some new idea or something that comes on the market. Man, that's got to be difficult to keep up with. Yes, it does. Uh, you know, we we got good guys at the shop. We strive to keep our chassis, you know, in the front and uh, do anything we can to make them better. Uh, just we're always striving to get that extra speed out of the car. I was going to say, you must be getting a lot of good feedback because it, 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 it's kind of a two-way street. It's a racer chassis guy deal. You guys are kind of be tra trading information all the time, I presume. You, you know, you've got a pretty good uh, team of guys doing that. I see this particular car here that we haven't really looked at, but uh, Scotty Bow on there. I know I see, I've seen him, I don't know how many places this year. Humboldt, I don't know, everywhere. Yeah, that's, uh, Scotty's actually the company owner's son also, but uh, we got, you know, we, we share information with all of our drivers. We, we're in the business to make all of our drivers fast, so, uh, you know, tech help, we're just a phone call away all the time. Uh, I was going to say, that's the other important thing is uh, having the know-how and if you got a problem trying to call somebody and get it worked out and uh, that 24-hour line for you guys? Yes, it is. <laughs> Okay, Neil, uh, all I can say is the kind of new guys on the block, and uh, I've seen them do, I, you know, I get around quite a bit, but, boy, I've seen the Phoenix cars doing pretty good yeah. this year. I've seen them up in the front. Yep. We've got a lot of knowledge at the shop. We've got uh, Gary Clark that used to run Dirt Works. Yeah, yeah. He works for us at the shop. Uh, got Jeff Dowdy fabricating, uh, been around racing forever. And so, you know, we got a got a lot of knowledge behind the scene. Well, Neil, I hope you guys have a good year, and... Uh, Wichita, that's uh, kind of in your backyard. It's not that far, so you know you might pick up some customers down here. You got anybody running 81? 
Uh, no, we don't. Uh, I think Andy Bryant gets out this way a little bit every now and then, but yeah. uh, nothing out here so far, but we'd love to have some people out this way. There you go, folks. You heard it. They want a Wichita guy on this team, so uh, call him up. He'll do it. Uh, by the way, website, phone number. Uh, it's, uh, phone number is 417-667-2719. Uh, website's kind of not up and going yet, but we have Facebook. Yeah. So look us up there on go. there. Get a hold of us. There you go. You got it. Let's get into Phoenix. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. Okay. We've got Stacy Sipe here, if I pronounced that correctly, and he's from Belleville Motorsports. And uh, Stacy, uh, boy, a name that's uh, been around this part of the country for quite a while and really synonymous with IMCA. Uh, uh, still at it this year again. Yeah, we've been building quite a few cars and we got quite a few on order and seems like we're busier than we ever have been. Boy, I'll tell you what, uh, just overlooking at some of those awards and you guys have been the chassis manufacturer or top, I don't know exactly how to call that, but uh, anyway, for uh, it looks like about four or five years for IMCA. Yeah, the last five out of the last six years we've been the Nas IMCA National Chassis Manufacturer of the Year and we've seemed to come out with the Eastern Region award for the last few years and we've got a lot of good cars out there and a lot of good customers and we hope they keep coming back and i see uh excuse me i <laughs> got a frog in my throat uh belleville motorsports chassis won the um what was it the sunflower at hayes yeah um the sunflower classic at the beginning of the 2014 race season um David Murray Jr. and his Belleville car won the A mods, and Tyler Fry and his BMS Sport mod won the Sport mods. Man, that's a good one to pull down there. They they got some tough racing going on out there at Hayes. That the racing out there in that part of the country just gets tougher and tougher. And boy, that IMCA, of course, is uh, it's tough to win in that deal because there's so many good cars and drivers. But uh, anything uh, new we need to know about BMS for the upcoming year? Oh, we've just made a few changes, and hopefully they're and they seem to be working out pretty good so well i think we got a pretty good car for this year and i hope we have pretty good success tell me this is there a, a phone number if somebody wanted to check in some information on a bms car uh, phone number or website um you can check out our website at bmsmods.com or you can call brandon at motor, at the shop at 785-527-5080 or you can drop by Belleville <laughs> and just go into the shop and say hi to everybody and do whatever it is you need to do there. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys have a good year. And uh, boy, it's a nice show they got going on here. Yeah. We really enjoy coming down here. We First time in a couple of years. And we have went to their show out at Hayes. And we yeah. kind of enjoy meeting all of our customers and talking to them one-on-one -on -one and trying to get them lined up for the next race season. What somebody else was telling me is almost like a small reunion here in the middle of the winter. But uh, anyway, like I say, uh, lots of luck to you guys out there. Uh, I don't think you guys need luck. You've got such a good product, and, man, it's been successful over the years. So uh, I know you'll do good. Thanks a lot, Bet. Thank you. Well, Jason Weber, we've got a car here I don't believe I've ever heard of. It doesn't mean that they're not good or anything like that. It's just that I've never heard of them, but Western Flyer, or where are you guys out of, Jason? Uh, Western Flyers are built in Oklahoma City by Curtis Allen, and uh, we run these cars here at Longdale Speedway yeah. and Outlaw Motor Speedway. They're a uh, Southern Sport mod. Yeah. That's primarily, is they're not A mods, just Southern Sport mod, and that's it? Yes, they're a uh, Southern Sport mod, what they're called, and they're on a stock four-link suspension, metric frame cars, okay. and they're an IMCA sanctioned class. All right, maybe that's why I haven't heard about them then, because I don't see them in the A mod class or the B mod class. But a Southern Sport, I get it out. Southern Sports mod is pretty much in the, in that category. Is that then an IMCA deal? Yes, sir. It is IMCA sanctioned. They run them all over Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, we've even been to Vegas racing out there in the duel. As this car sets, and of course I haven't got a picture of it, I might try and do that, but what would somebody have to pay for this as it sets here right now? Uh, I think you can get a rolling chassis for around 14000 for a roller. Uh, about fourteen, and, and then you're ready to go. And I see we got a girl's name on here. It says Valerie Hoskins. I guess she races down there at this track you guys are talking about. 
No, that's the uh, boss's old lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't let her hear that. <laughs> She'll like to hear that, I'm sure. <laughs> well, anyway, Josh, Josh, wasn't Jason. it? Jason, uh, man, it's always good to see something new on the market. How long you guys been in business? Um, I don't build these cars. We just race them. Curtis has been building them now about five, six years, I think. Uh-huh. And uh, he does a good job on them. They go real good. Yeah. All right, Jason. Well, I appreciate you talking to us, buddy. I hope a year goes good this year, and they sell a lot of race cars. You guys have a lot of fun down there. We don't get down to Oklahoma very much, but uh, maybe one of these years we'll make it down there. I've heard of that Outlaw Speedway before, but just haven't got down there yet. But uh, anyway, thanks a lot, buddy. Thank you. Well, we've got Derek Klima here with me, and uh, you're selling these GRTs. Kind of had a uh, rich history in... uh, of uh, motorsports before with chassis and stuff so this year you're changing up and going with the GRT yeah I've been uh, I've been in the race car industry for several years and uh, I, I owned a, a race car company for about 18 years and I sold it a, about three years ago and I had some customers that come along that uh, was wanting me to be in the middle of helping them bolt pick out and bolt yeah. together new cars and I looked around and, and studied who was doing what, and uh, you know the GRT stuff's been pretty good in our area for a while. They don't have a whole lot. Most of my customers are IMCA, and they don't have a whole lot of IMCA cars out there. They do a lot of open stuff, you know, uh-huh. UMP and NCRA and USMTS. And right. so anyway, I, I got a hold of GRT, and uh, they got me set up to to sell their cars. So, uh, and I have sold uh, quite a few here for for them already. I usually I buy I buy them with frames, powder coated with bodies and interiors, and bring them home and put uh, my choice of parts on and make them roll and you know I got special things we like to do to them and the, put the combination of parts together that I think works the best for them. Not giving away any secrets <laughs> but how much do you have to change to take the car from an open car to a IMCA or vice versa? Well we bought these as cars for IMCA so they're IMCA legal stuff but okay. you know there's not as many differences between an open car and an IMCA car anymore uh, IMCA you used to not be able to run like quick change rear ends and stuff and now they're legal in these cars so there's not a lot of differences on what we actually do to the chassis or the parts that get bolted on them that dictate whether it's an open car or not generally that is done by the customer as far as their choice of maybe motors and stuff like that and wheels and tires but um, pretty much they are all uh, IMCA allows pretty much what all the other guys are doing now if you prepared a car let, let's say IMCA what, what would be the price I mean like you were saying it's kind of dictated by what the customer wants to some degree but what like a, basic price uh, well they start with a frame powder coated with body and interior and you get about seventy six hundred dollars in them and then um, it's pretty much straightforward through then and there's lots of options along the way of course right, you know you, you can you can put a three hundred dollar seat in it or a two thousand dollar seat in it you can put a, a sixty dollar shock on it or a three hundred and sixty dollar right. shock uh-huh. but for the cars that I'm putting together for the parts that I like to recommend with wheels and tires and shocks and springs and radiator and fuel line and basically the customer would put their motor tranny drive shaft and rear end gear in it you know it, it's it's around twenty thousand dollars yeah it's worth it <laughs> so, they're nice cars the workmanship's awesome on them they've been really great to work with uh, they they seem to get them done in a pretty timely manner down there. I was down there a couple weeks ago, and they were about they were 65 cars behind, and the number is growing and growing for them. So they're a little bit new into the IMCA market, and uh, so anyway, I, I look to have a good relationship with them here in the coming years. All I can say is that I can't think of a single track that I went to this year that a GRT didn't win at one time or another. They they seem to be, I don't know if I want to call them a car of choice, but uh, man, uh, this past couple of years, they have really, I think, taken over uh, the racing scene as far as the modifieds go here around the Midwest. And uh, man, I've seen them win a lot of races. I think you made a good choice with the car that yeah. you picked. Well, it, it helps that they've got the right cars in it, the right guys driving them, you know. And they've they've apparently done their homework and gotten everything in the right spot. Uh-huh. And it makes it easy for the rest of us, you know, <laughs> to uh, to get in them and win some yeah. races. Well, you throw your name in the hat with that. That, that sounds like a pretty good mix to me. I I, I would think uh, with the history that you've had, 
you know, with the modified racing and all that, man, this has got to be a win-win for, well, for, for everybody. I've worked with a lot of racers. You know, I worked with uh, David Murray Jr. He won, I think, four national championships uh, for me when I was at Belva Motorsports. And so I knew what he'd done, and we bolted his cars together the same way. And, and I've worked with a lot of racers that, that don't know a whole lot about racing, you know, and, and everybody in between. And uh, they all are, all are capable of winning races. It's just a matter of understanding the car and understanding what needs to be done to it to make the changes to, to win, you know. And all the cars are the same. You know, you get the right shocks and springs and the right setup, and, uh, and, I, and any one of them can win no matter who's driving it. You just got to get the car changed, make the right adjustments for the driver. There you go. Well, folks, if I had the money, I'd have one of these. So that's about all. Caught up with Jay Neal here of BSB Shocks, and uh, Jay, uh, man, I can't think of anything that's probably more important nowadays on a car than the shock package. Uh, I got, I'm sure you agree with that. That is correct. The shocks have really taken off in this market and become very important to the car, a uh, really crucial part of the car, and and it's tough today because there's a lot going on there that that racers don't really need to fully understand. But they need to understand a few things, and they need to know what to ask their shot guys. There's a lot of shot guys out there nowadays, and guys need to ask the right questions, you know. So I feel like we sell one of the best shock brands out there, but there's other companies out there, and if guys need help, we're willing to help them too, you know. So uh, the door's always open if you got shot questions. You know, we're always... Be, feel free to you know let us know and this covers not only modifieds we just happen to have a modified sitting there beside us but you're talking about just about anything in racing late model sprints the whole the whole nine yards yeah we're not real big in the sprint market but we got some really good stuff for the crate late model deal um, and we've been very fortunate to win a lot of races there but we're not really big there because we're not really marketing it that well but really got some good stuff for the late models and that crate late model, man, that, that, that'd have to be an important deal in there because that's one of those things where you got to keep that motor wrapped up because you just ain't got that much horsepower. You got to keep that thing going to get horsepower out of it. So, like you say, getting it down to the track would be really important. The way these racers, especially here in the Midwest nowadays, I think they have kind of a difficult year because we start out usually in the spring, few, first few months, it's really wet, tacky tracks go on through the summer get into august it's just so dry and slick uh, man the shock package uh, it has to be a, a deal that, that works in several different situations this is correct uh, when we build shocks we try to do a little different than what everybody else does so we try to build a shock that has a sizable amount of bleed in it and by allowing that bleed in the shock uh, we can run in both moisture and slick now, we don't reduce the amount of rebound, but we add more bleed. Where most companies will reduce the rebound, or the bleed, to create the rebound. So we have a shock that will perform in the moisture, perform in the slick. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it seems to work out real well. Are these shocks uh, externally adjustable, or is this something that has to be done through you guys? Well, in the modified stuff, they're all non-adjustable shocks. Uh, we do some adjustable rebound stuff in a steel body, but there's not a lot of classes that will allow it. Uh -huh. And in a lot of cases, there's once you get a car set, there's not a, a lot of need for it. So for an example, on our late model stuff, on our crate stuff, we do some non-adjustable and some rebound adjustable. And when the car gets really good, there's not a lot of need for adjustment. And adjustment is, on the late model, like a uh, weekly series is what hurts them guys so much they end up adjusting themselves right out of the game uh -huh. so like on the late model stuff we really try to promote a can a canister plus if i said that correct <laughs> shock uh -huh. you know because it's the compression canister that gets everybody in trouble uh, okay. so without feeling the shock then it makes it really difficult for the driver to do his job I wanted to ask you uh, on this uh, coming year, uh, where are some of the tracks that you're going to be at? Well, I tell you what, we're going to, of course, we're going to do a Friday night deal probably at Salina Speedway, Salina, Kansas. Uh, we're going to spend some time up at Mayetta. We've already scheduled uh, several tests and tunes at Mayetta to help them guys out up there. The B-Mod guys at Mayetta 
Uh, we're going to have some special days up there. We're going to bring some shocks uh, so they can bolt them on and try them. Uh -huh. And we're going to try to get two test dates up there for the B mod guys. Of course, the A mod guys will bring stuff for them too, but it was kind of set up for the B mod guys because they asked for it. And then we're going to do some stuff down at Longdale. Oklahoma and probably outlaw motor speedway in Oklahoma and um, We'll be all over the Midwest. So if somebody needs some help, we'll come and help them you know. Why don't you give us a phone number and a website Facebook whatever you got as far as that goes. our phone number is 620-326-3152 That's the shop Mondays through Friday 8 to 5 um, We're off an hour for lunch my cell number is 620-399-0323. If you got questions, you can call that. If you got shock questions, call that, tech questions. Uh, our Facebook page, J. Neal or BSB, and we do a deal on there we call driver's meeting, and if we post driver's meetings, it's open for questions. So just start firing messages off. If you got questions, ask them. Uh, and of course, our website, bsbgofast.com. So if you need help, that's what we're here for. Call and ask for me or Delbert, and we'll get you all the help you need. Like I say, I can't think of anything more important right now in a race car with all the new technology, all that stuff that's come out here in the last few years. But, man, if you just can't get it to the ground, might as well forget it. But, uh, anyway, Neil, thanks for talking with us, buddy. And uh, I know I'll see you down the road somewhere. All right, good talking to you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> We have got a racing legend here. We got C. Ray Hall, uh, owner, promoter, whatever, of 81 Speedway plus uh, NCRA kind of falls under your banner. I mean, is there anything else we should know about besides those two? Well, you know, I mean, I get, I'm very fortunate that, that I get to do a lot of things like the Belleville High Banks and Kansas State Fairgrounds. I get to do a lot of county fairs. Don't do as many county fairs as we used to. I used to go to Liberal, Beaver, yeah. and a lot of them. and. Uh, Racing changed a little bit, and so have we, and yeah. so we kind of brought it back a little more, and, and over the years, uh, in the, the guys that started in CRA have unfortunately passed away, a lot of yeah. them, and got out, and so I've, that's become my sole responsibility, and so between the time I do be responsible for them, and 81, and the other 25, it's a full-time deal. I know for a couple of years there, it seemed like 81 Speedway and Hutchison were kind of the home tracks for that but you guys have, have branched out like you say out into Belleville and uh, is there going to be any other tracks added to that list for the coming year? Well I no, that's pretty much it you know and it's unfortunate uh, about 10, 7, 8 years ago we lost the opportunity to race during the Kansas State Fair and uh, you know that will never happen again so we don't get to do those and things like that so like I said we do a couple shows there a year and, and the Nationals you know we still have keep man alive with what 57 58 years yeah. of that so you know that's a big part of our history as well as the kansas state fairgrounds and um you know just um, there's always plenty of opportunities yeah i was gonna say i i think this past year i don't know how it was for you guys all around but i know a lot of the tracks that i went to it seemed like car counts were down crowds were smaller uh, did you guys experience any of that well the car count seemed like it's stabled out a little bit this year. Uh, we've went through quite a transition here in Wichita with the aircraft and, uh -huh, and right. stuff like that. And so, you know, unfortunately, the days of big B feature divisions and stuff like that, there there's just not a lot of them. And, and, and I think the race people have kind of changed. It. You know, nobody wants to go out and pay the dues and, and run 10th and 15th every week. So they kind of look for another opportunity where they can be a little more competitive. And so, so that's kind of changed things. And, and and then um, I was uh, had the privilege of hooking up with a, a new Ford dealership here in Wichita, mm -hmm. a different one than I'd been with for all the years with Mel Hamilton Ford. And, and it seemed like that partnering up with them got me an opportunity to reach a lot of new people yeah. and uh, do a lot more things. Uh, you know, she, uh, Lisa Hamilton came out with her helicopter and landed on the front straightaway oh, wow. and <laughs> had a couple sackfuls of money that she gave to the drivers and things yeah. like that. And, and so um, I, I kind of seemed like like that not only rejuvenated some of the racers but I know it did my the fans and, and even my employees and, yeah. and so when that kind of happens you know everybody steps a little higher and yeah. so we're looking forward to another year. I was going to say that sponsorship man it can make or break you <laughs> and it, that's a problem with a lot of racers it seems like it breaks them because there's just not as much sponsorship money out there as it used to be for them but it sounds like for you guys it's worked out really well. 
How about this year? Uh, I know you just said there a minute ago that sometimes you like to give people a little change of pace. What are we going to see at 81 Speedway this year for a change of pace? Well, you know, back to your other previous question here, you know, uh, there is still a lot of sponsor money out there. You can't go get the $5,000 sponsors, but there's a whole bunch of $500 ones out there. And, and I think our sport is, is lacked in a lot of, for a lot of years of not spending enough time trying to be responsible you know we all have to have the phones we all have to pay the electric yeah. bill and everything like that but we all think we can go run a racetrack the day of the event <laughs> and uh, that was one of the things when i decided i was going to promote racing that that i told myself and told the family i said you know what if i go give this thing 40 hours a week there's no way i cannot cr make my wages and that yeah. was the mentality i had and and uh, we've been able to find a lot of good sponsors over yeah. the years yeah. It, it's like I say, it certainly helps out. What, what about these special events, or what do you got coming up for us? Well, you know, I, I'm a, again, I'm a believer that it's hard to get people to, uh, and I'm certainly not disrespectful to bowling alleys and things such as that, but, you know, to go to a bowling alley for 20 weeks, it's hard. Yeah. You know, about 14th, 15th week, you know, you want to do something. And I got a cousin that owns a bowling yeah. alley, so, you know, I'm certainly not anti-bowling. But, but I don't think the race fans, everybody likes stock cars. Everybody doesn't like sprint cars. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, it's kind of like big cars, little cars, bright colors, dark colors. So I think we got, I've been very fortunate to have a lot of different types of cars available to me here. And so I'd rather have a group of you that only come to the Speedway six times a year or four and somebody else to come 10 or 12 and not depend on one small group of people so um, that's kind of been my philosophy and so because of that I try to bring in some open wheel shows some stock car shows anything I can we're gonna bring it in here I, I like to say I was down for that Southwest deal that came in man that was probably one of the better races I saw uh, for the year for sprint cars and of course Wichita has had a, a thriving history in sprint racing over the years and you guys may be one of the few tracks in the United States has been able to maintain that sprint class. I mean, uh, other than like Knoxville, which that's their feature class, but you guys have had it as an additional class to the other cars that you run and been able to maintain it for years. Well, we have, and you know, we don't have a big field, but but once again, uh, for the person that's not really a, a spectator, or I mean, a, a true race fan, if he comes out and sees two or three divisions of stock cars and then sees two or three divisions of modified, and then all of a sudden here comes a, a sprint car that looks lots faster, uh -huh. it gives them something different to right. view. And But when, when we put book a show of a sprint car special or something like that i can't have 10 cars now right. i gotta have 20 25 right. 30 whatever right. it may be so i can't fool the fight the fans and we're not going to try to but for the weekly show you know it's fun to have something just yeah. a little bit different just change yeah. the monopoly of the program exactly I, I come down for the mars to me that's a good series can't beat mars late models they put on a good show but uh i have yet to beat 81 speedway and not see a good show because <laughs> it i don't know if it part of it's the track or the competition down this way or what but just always good racing there well, I appreciate that. And, of course, I've told people I have a lot of opportunities. Sometimes, you know, we do two, three shows a week. So we get a few more opportunities at a lot of the racetracks. But um, probably the biggest thing that separates me from a lot of the other promoters, I've never been a racer. Uh -huh. And uh, I've always been a race fan. And, and so the things that irritate them fans irritate me. <laughs> <laughs> and so when yeah. that car stops in turn two and uh -huh. for no reason, I promise you, it irritates me. <laughs> so, um, you know, because of some of those things that, that I do try to make uh, sure that the fans are happy, and, and I figure if the fans are happy and I'm happy, I know the racers aren't all going to be happy, yeah. but hopefully we can keep enough of them happy. We can keep the doors open. Keep them coming back. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, Ray, I appreciate you talking with us, buddy. Like I say, a legend in the sport. Your family been around for a number of years. And uh, what was it you said, 43 years at 81 Speedway? Well, I've done it. I've been a promoter in racing since 1971. So parents bought the Speedway back in 1963, and so uh, I really don't know nothing else but racing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Once again, folks, see Ray Hall, 81. Speedway. Come on down and see them. I know they'll be glad to have you down there and uh, see rail make sure you're comfortable, have a good show. Got good concessions. I don't know what else to say. I enjoy it. Free parking. <laughs> well, you know, I just want to try to be. We get together one day a week to have some good, clean fun in a dirty scene with a driver's shirt and a sponsor cab. 
We get here early for the first hot laugh. We dig dirt, we're dirt track fools. Kenzer is king, Lasowski is the dude. The closest thing to heaven on planet Earth. It's a track side seat, cause we dig dirt. Hitting the corner in a power slide. Man, these good old boys can drive. Racing from the rear to the front of the field. Barely touching the ground with the left front wing. We dig dirt for dirt track fools. Kenzer is king, Lasowski is the dude. The closest thing to heaven on planet Earth. It's a trackside seat, cause we dig dirt. Cause we dig dirt I don't use a shovel But I still dig dirt We get together one day a week To have some good clean fun In a dirty scene with our driver's shirts and our sponsor caps We get